Hello! Here is another video from Simply Studies. These videos help you understand the basics. For great scores, press subscribe now and visit our website. Data Sufficiency Data sufficiency in GMAT is a new way of approaching maths problems because here we don't have to solve the problem. We just have to find out whether the information provided in the statements is sufficient for the problems to be solved. Therefore, those who are preparing for GMAT should first understand how the problems are solved. And when they know how the problem, uh, how they, when they can solve the problems, then on they'll be ready for the data sufficiency problems. Because this happens that a person thinks maybe I am not able to solve the problem with this information. Somebody else might be able to do it. Okay. For example, let's see this problem. So this is a data sufficiency problem. This is how it appears in the test. The problem is, is x greater than y? Two statements are given. The first statement is x squared equals 4. The second statement is y cubed equals minus 125. And the answer choices can be out of five. The first answer choice is A, which says that statement one alone is sufficient, but statement two alone is not sufficient. We take B, and statement two alone is sufficient, and statement one is not sufficient. We take C, when both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. We take D, when both of them alone are sufficient and we take E when there's not enough information and we are not able to solve the problem even if both statements are given to us okay so let's solve this problem first statement says x squared equals 4 if x squared equals 4 x can be plus 4 or minus 4 so this information alone is not sufficient for us to say whether x is greater than y or not. We know the value of x, but we don't know the value of y. Okay, now we look at statement, statement 2, the second statement. It says y cubed is minus 1 to 5, which tells us that y is minus 5. Is this a, a statement alone can tell us whether x is greater than y or not? No, because we just know the value of y. We don't know anything about x. Okay, now if we consider both statements together, so we know that x is either plus 4 or minus 4, and y is minus 5. So yes, now we know that y is smaller than x, whatever is the value of x, because x can be plus 4 or minus 4. In both cases, y is smaller than x. It means that both these statements, if taken together, are sufficient for us to answer the question. So the answer to this problem is marked C. Okay, so we can have this flowchart uh, when we are solving data sufficiency problems. The first statement, the first step is read the question first. Before anything else, we should read the question. Next is look at what's required, what's given and what's missing. Then read statement one alone and try to solve the problem. So if you are able to solve the problem, then your answer choices are either A or B. If you are not able to solve the problem using statement one, then the answer choices left are C, D and E. Then the next step is read statement two alone. Now, based on our previous calculations, if statement 2 alone is able to solve the problem now, and we were already able to solve it using statement 1, so the answer is D. Otherwise, it's A. In other case, if you are not able to answer the problem uh, using statement 1, and we are able to answer this problem using statement 2, then the answer choice B is correct. And if we are still not able to solve the problem, 
then the next step is test both statements together if yes then the answer is c if no then the answer is e let's use this method to solve some problems okay so this is a uh, data sufficiency problem the first one what's the value of x squared two statements are given to us 3x plus 5 is 13 x equals to y so as we are told the first step is read the question first the value of x squared okay so what do we need here what's missing because no other information is given so we know that whether a certain x is positive or negative the value of its square will always be the same okay we know this information okay now let's do the third step that is reading statement one alone and trying to solve the problem so re statement one alone says 3x plus 5 equals 13 yes so it gives us x equals 3 which is sufficient for us to answer the question x squared it means that we are on the left hand side of this problem solving diagram which we have made so the answer can only be a or d okay now we do the third step reading statement 2 alone and trying to solve the question statement 2 alone says x equals 2y yes or no no this statement is not enough for us to find out what's the value of x squared so according to our diagram we can say yes the answer should be a okay let's do another problem what's the area of circle a two statements are given Stay, uh, so square b is circumscribed by circle a and perimeter of square b is 28 inches this is the diagram let's see so what's the question area of circle a is to be find out and what do we need for this we need the radius of the circle to find out the area okay so our target is to find out the circle uh, the radius of the circle if you are able to find out then we will be able to answer this question so let's do the third step that is reading the first statement the first statement is square b is circumscribed by circle a okay now we have another thing that is square so this square we don't know anything about this square of course this statement is not sufficient for us to answer the question so the answer choice is left for us are b c or e let's do the next step that is reading statement two alone statement two alone says perimeter of square b is 28 inches again we have to answer the question what's the area of square circle a and statement is saying perimeter of square b is 28 inches so is this statement alone sufficient now it means we are left with answer choices c or e so we'll do the next step that is testing both statements together now we know that square b is circumscribed by circle a and perimeter of square b is 28 inches so with the help of the perimeter of square b we can find out what's the radius of circle a and then we can find out what's the area of circle a so it means if we take both these statements together we are able to answer the question so both of them are sufficient together it means the answer choice c is correct okay thank you